Hello and welcome to the Mastering Academy YouTube channel. My name is Friedemann Tischmeier and today I'm going to show you something about the advantages and disadvantages of different bit resolutions, in particular between 24-bit fixed point and 32-bit floating point. In order to give you a simple practical example, I have here a file in 32-bit floating point bit resolution and yeah i want to do something pretty simple to show you the benefits of 32-bit floating point i just make a level raise of 3 dbs and before we do that we make the global analysis of this excerpt and we can see that we have a maximum peak level of minus one and a little bit db as ppm sample peak program metering the old school peak metering thing so you should look around a little bit for true peak leveling and i think all daws and wavelab also will change to true peak level metering in the future but now it's still sppm so we have a little bit headroom everything is fine with the signal and now i render the stuff with this gain increase of 3 dbs in order to so i make a replace in order to yeah provoke a few overs so and here we go we can see hopefully a few bad things uh, let me look around a little bit here possibly we have something yes here we go you can see that the transient is gone and this is pretty bad and shouldn't happen but if we take the global analysis and do it again we can see positive values this is actually impossible <laughs> um, due to SPPM measurement because uh, SPPM measurement ends usually with 0 dB full scale but in this case we have a 30-bit floating point signal and wave lab is possible uh, possible is able uh, to measure positive values and this is just possible with a 32-bit floating point signal and what we can do now is we can normalize it to 0 dB and what happens all transients come back into the area up to 0 dB full scale so adapted to your mixing situation i recommend that you use a limiter during the mixing process on the master bus but just for technical reasons so that you make sure that the absolute top end of the transients will not exceed the zero db level so that your um, da converters are safe and the signal is clean but before you are going to make the export deactivate the limiter and export in 32-bit floating point so that the few transients which exceed the 0 db level will be stored in the floating point area of the audio file and afterwards with your mastering program you can normalize the file and uh, yeah get all the transients back and treat it in a good manner during the mastering process so if you use logic you may check out a workaround uh, i think in the latest version there's the possibility to freeze your file and the frozen file is in 32-bit floating point and you can just pick it out of your freeze folder uh, please check it out. I haven't done that with Logic, but I have done that with other programs such as Cubase and Nuendo, and it works pretty fine. In order to show you the disadvantage of 24-bit fixed point, I do the same thing. So I go back to my source thing. We now have the signal with one plus db headroom and i export the selection but create a named file and 
here we go. Ta-da. And hopefully we will find a few truncated areas. Let me look around. Possibly here we have more luck. Yes, a few slight things. I am pretty sure that we will find better ones here. Yeah, we have a good one. I make a marker here and now I make a global analysis and what we see is that the maximum value is 0 dB because the SPPR meter isn't able to measure values above 0 dB in this case because all information above 0 dB were cut away. So you are absolutely unable to bring this transients back into the area of 0 dB. So uh, a normalization wouldn't help you and this is the big disadvantage of 24-bit fixed point. And having that in mind, I want to show you... Uh, I, I love actually the Oxford stuff. It's a pretty big sounding stuff. I, I yeah, like it pretty much. But uh, you have to be aware that it works in 24-bit fixed point. Internally it works actually in double precision and, and 48-bit fixed point, but it works in fixed point. So if you create a signal which exceeds the area of of uh, 0 dB, so which has a plus value in within your DAW, either if it's your mixing DAW or your mastering DAW, uh, the signal will be truncated in the input. So you have to take this uh, red lights here pretty seriously because you are unable to reduce the signal within the plugin because the plugin is already working in 24-bit bit resolution. So you would reduce the signal in 24-bit uh, resolution and uh, it's unable to reduce the signal before it reaches the plugin. So in order to avoid that, I strongly recommend to work uh, with a decent headroom and yeah, possibly you should uh, reduce the level with your first plug-in or you can normalize the signal down uh, with a little bit uh, with a little headroom uh, which doesn't cause any audiophile damage when you work with 32-bit floating point and then you can avoid overs and the same is true with the output over indicator if it pops up you will truncate your transients and it's the, the plugins are not able to treat values above 0 dBFS. So this is pretty important to know in order to create the best results out of your Sonox plugins. And the same is true for all other 24-bit fixed point plugins. So I hope this little hints were uh, good and helpful for you and you can learn for sure more in the Mastering Academy and yeah I will come back here with more videos soon. Okay, see you soon and have a great day. Bye bye.